Let's go live now to the New South Wales Independent, Alex Greenwich. Alex Greenwich joins me live now. Uh, good to see you, Alex. Um, good to see you, Laura. So, sorry you had to sit through all that uh, <coughs> again. Uh, and Mark Latham has doubled down, far from an apology. Look, you know, as, uh, as I and others have said, um, you know, this really clearly indicates to so many that he is unfit for office. Uh, I hope he gets the help he needs, whatever that help may be. Uh, I think Chris Minns, as our new Premier, has made a really strong stance saying that he won't work with, um, with Mr Latham. And I'm looking forward to the Coalition hopefully saying the same thing. You know, there's no place for this kind of narrative in modern-day politics. Um, it was vilely graphic uh, and a sexualised homophobic attack on me, uh, something I've never experienced in my 10 years in elected office. And I've been part of some pretty intense debates in my time, mm. um, but it's never got this... Um, uh, it's never got this disgraceful. Well, this guy was almost Prime Minister. Um, we can't forget that. Now he's a leader of not an insignificant party in New South Wales. You say you hope Mark Latham gets the help that he needs... Do you think he is mentally unwell? Is that the allowance you give him? Look, I mean, that, that's not for me to say. I'm certainly not qualified or trained to make that kind of assessment. Um, all, all I know is that these are not the comments that someone um, who seeks to engage in a, a robust political discourse would engage in. Um, they are clearly... Um, I, I'm not sure what motivates them. I'm not sure what motivates Mr Latham. Um, you know, we've seen here is a person and a party who goes after minority groups one by one. Um, the attack he made on, on me, the homophobic, sexualised attack he made on me, just follows a series of transphobic and other um, uh, anti-LGBTI attacks that this person has been making uh, for weeks, months and years. Uh, and it's great to see my political colleagues starting to call it out and starting to blacklist him. We saw Chris Minns on Friday as well as on Sunday with my colleague uh, Kieran Gilbert on, on Sunday Agenda. On Friday he said, you know, it's disgusting comments and what it does is, is unleash ghouls on the likes of you. Has that happened? Uh, you know, sadly it has. I mean, my office um, has had repeated calls from people making offensive remarks. Uh, we've had to report a number of people to the police. Police have arrested people. Um, my really? social medias are flooded with, um, with really graphic homophobic attacks. So Mr Minns, is, the new Premier, is absolutely right that Latham has unleashed the ghouls. Um, but he's been doing this to the LGBT community for quite a while. I mean, we only need to see those scenes in Belfield uh, where we've got some 500 uh, thugs who had been mm. whipped up into a violent frenzy uh, targeting some 12 peaceful uh, queer activists. Do you think he is homophobic at the heart of things? He's just masked it for, for some time? Look, I, I, don't, I can't even begin to understand Mr Latham. Um, what motivates someone to say something in such a, a homophobic, sexualised way about a, a colleague who we've... Although we disagree all the time, yeah. we've always managed to have a, a fairly robust and respectful dialogue with each other. So I'm, I'm not sure what has happened there. Um, all I know is... Uh, you know, this has been an unfortunate distraction um, in a week of New South Wales politics. This is not the sort of stuff I want to be talking about. No. I want to be talking about further LGBTQI plus reforms. And I know the new Premier wants to be talking about his mandate to deliver for the people of New South Wales. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important that we sideline Mr Latham, that we focus on the reforms ahead of us. But we also need to call it out and obviously look at what actions we can take to make sure that he's not able to continue to make these attacks um, uh, on other people. OK. Um, that is fair enough, but, but well done for, for not just sweeping it under the carpet because these things, I think, do need to be ventilated when you see um, that kind of comment made. We've seen Chris Minns. Uh, we also just heard from David Littleproud, the Nationals leader at a federal level, saying it's just, you know, beyond the beyond. We also heard from Pauline Hanson, who said it was disgusting. as She called on Mark Latham to apologise. He didn't do that. What do you think she should do next? 
Look, I, I don't understand how the One Nation Party operates. I, I do know that my office, for the first time ever, has been contacted by One Nation supporters and voters. Really? Uh, expressing their outrage at Mr Latham and expressing their support for me. Um, clearly, this, you know, the, the party that Mr Latham represents in our upper house is named after Pauline Hanson. Mm. Um, surely, if she is so outraged and disgusted by his vile homophobic remarks. She's going to need to take action uh, to protect her own name. Um, well, but you know, he's there just are also... been elected, Alex, though, for another eight years. So he stays there in Parliament no matter what, doesn't he? And, and you know, I would also look to the, the members of One Nation in New South Wales who are likely going to join him there, those being Tanya Mahalik and Rod mm. Roberts, uh, to look at whether they have him as their leader well, or that, not. What have they said? Because uh, from my perspective, it's been radio silence, hasn't it? Yeah, look, I, I haven't heard anything. I, you know, Rod and, and Tanya are mm. decent people. Um, I'm sure that they are absolutely outraged and disgusted by the comments that Mr Latham made. Um, and I think that the wider thing is here... Mr Latham probably needs to work out whether the New South Wales upper house is an appropriate workplace for him. Mm. I mean, it's quite clear he's going to be sidelined. It's quite clear the pressure of, um, uh, of the office is manifesting in, in, in quite profoundly weird ways for him. Um, so, you know, I hope he takes time to reflect on his position in the New South Wales upper house. The New South Wales parliament should be a place where we work together, mm. have robust debate and deliver on outcomes for the people of New South Wales not a place where we engage in personalised, homophobic, yeah. sexualised attacks on one another. Just one final quick one, Alex. I contacted Twitter. Uh, they said after a review of available information, it's their view that he hasn't broken or breached any policies, including safety policies. What do you have to say to that? Well, look, I, I, I think um, if you just have a look at the responses I've received on Twitter from his followers, um, from his supporters and, indeed, his ongoing um, homophobic and transphobic diatribe, uh, he has created a safety risk for the LGBT community um, right across Australia. Mm. We know that, that violent attacks, particularly on the trans community, are up. We know that the health and wellbeing of the LGBT community has been under attack. And statements like the ones Mr Latham has made on platforms like Twitter certainly contribute to that. Alex Greenwich, good to talk to you this morning. Hopefully uh, we talk a bit of policy next time we have you on the program. Thanks so much. Anytime, Laura. Thank you.